Things can go wrong if you are in the wrong place. I didn't mean for this to happen. One of the guys pulled up next to me at a red light. He gave me the go ahead to lower my window. He told me, you have a flat tire. I thanked him and parked on the right side of the Walmart lot. When I got out, I saw a screw stuck in the tread of the tire. This was slowly letting air out. What will happen next? It was time for me to go inside and get a can of that slime. I took out the screw when I got back. That was a mistake. Even more air began to hiss out. I quickly put it back together and went to the nearby gas station to get some air. I only had 15 miles to go, but I still planned to check the tire. I would use the slime can if it got too low. I saw that the tire was getting really low in the driver's side mirror about 5 miles from home. I went to a gas station, but they didn't have air. Now was the time to try the slime. It came out as green goo after I poured it in. It's called slime for a reason, but at least it stopped hissing. I saw a pickup truck pull in just as I was about to get back in my car. It was one of those huge ones with really big wheels. It looks like the guy was making up for something. I thought I had seen that truck before. When the door opened, a tall, blonde man in cowboy boots and a big belt buckle walked out. It made me laugh, but it went away when I saw who got out of the passenger seat. A pretty woman with dark hair. I knew her right away. It was Rachel, my wife of 18 years. That's a shock. They never even saw my car because it was parked off to the side. The car belonged to the company. One of those small imports that doesn't really stand out, I guess. They walked into the store together, and she laughed at something he said. It hit me in the gut like a punch. I was stuck and couldn't breathe or move. As I stood there, I felt stupid. Then I remembered where I had seen the man before. He and Rachel both worked at the same place. He was one of the caseworkers at a mental health center, and she ran the office there. I saw his truck at their office. The main question was why Rachel was with him. I finally remembered his name. John Garner. But Rachel should have been at work. It was important to me to find out. I held on in the car for a while. Taking coffee cups with him, he helped her get into the car after they left the store. They got in their car and drove off, leaving me behind. He parked in the garage when they got to our house. I lost sight of them when the garage door shut. I had to wait for 30 minutes, but I was nervous about the tire the whole time. I checked it over and over, but I couldn't tell if it was loosing air. After two hours, the garage door opened again, and they drove right by me. I put up a file box to hide my face, but I don't think they would have seen me anyway. They were really into each other. Rachel didn't finish work until 5, even though it was only 2.30. I had a lot of time. The first thing I did was go inside and look around. I didn't know what to say to her when I picked up Toby at 4. Toby was my daughter who was 15 years old. I wasn't sure what I'd find inside, but I hoped to get some answers. It was quiet inside. I knew I needed to fix something because I could hear the tap in Toby's bathroom dripping. Aside from that, the only sound was air moving through the vents. I checked out the area and saw that everything was fine. The bed upstairs had new covers put on it. It broke my heart. I slid down to the floor as I leaned against the wall. I was numb. There looked like there was only one way to explain it. My mind was going around and around for about 30 minutes. I couldn't figure out what was going through my mind. I thought I was high. I grabbed a Sprite to calm my stomach down because it was upset. I went back to the bathroom because I was too hot and sweaty. I looked in the vanity for a towel, put it in the sink to soak, and then splashed cold water on my face. When I washed up, I felt a little better. Then I saw something strange. The floor of the bathroom was wet. Before going back to work, they took a shower. I quickly went back to the bedroom and sat on the edge of the bed, stunned. That's when I realized it was the bed my wife and her lover had just left. The understanding hit me like a ton of bricks, and I jumped back in shock. This is where everything took place. I didn't know what to do next. It was a given that Rachel would get a divorce. But other than that, I had no idea. I had to pick up Toby from school and didn't know any lawyers or anything about the court system. Hey, Toby, what was I going to say to her? I felt like I'd been on a 10-day bender as I dragged myself to the car. It hurt to look at me, and my head hurt. My health wouldn't let me drive, but I couldn't wait for Toby. It hit me all at once. She was the only thing in my life that was steady. I had to look out for my daughter because she was my rock. No matter what I did, I had to think about how she would feel. I saw her waiting at the school doors as I pulled into the line of cars. I felt sad as she walked toward the car because she was so beautiful. Toby got her mother's dark, almost Mediterranean skin tone and hair. The doctor called her eyes hazel, but they were really something else. They were deep brown with gold and green lines running through them. Like me, she was tall and had long legs. She was also very pretty. Her backpack was in the back, and she jumped into the car. 
She reached out to kiss me, but she stopped short. Hey, Dad, how are you? She asked, her voice full of worry. Are you okay? What happened? Is Mom okay? What's going on? I told her, I'm fine, kitten. No one is hurt or sick, but Toby, I need to talk to you. Come with me to the park, and I'll explain everything. Let me talk to you while I hold you. Question time. Wait until we get there. That's fine, Dad, but you scare me, she said. I told her, I know, kitten, but trust me, everything will be okay, hoping it wasn't just wishful thought. We drove for a short time to get to the park. I had pushed her on those swings a million times. Rachel and I had sat on the seats together and watched her play. It was hard not to think about the good times. Would that be the end of my life? Just thoughts of better times. Hand in hand, we walked over to a bench and swung our arms around like we had done since she was a little girl starting to walk. When I sat down, it was hard for me to find the right words. She told him, just lay it out. It's okay with me. I said, I'm not sure I can. Then the words came out all at once. I told her the whole story and cried every time I thought about it. I had tears running down my face. During it all, she held my hand and made me feel better. She sat close to me when I finally ran out of words. She said in a soft voice, sounds rough, dad, we need to talk to mom at home. What she says is very important. We don't know everything about it yet, but it looks bad. We need to listen to her. I was proud and gave her a kiss on the head. My child was stronger than I ever was. She pulled my hand to let me know it was time to go. Want to drive? I gave it. Her eyes got bright. Her learner's pass had just been given to her. While she paused, a shadow went over her eyes, but it went away quickly. She was careful as she drove home. Rachel's car was in the garage. It was time to face the truth. She hugged and kissed us when we got to the door, like she hadn't done anything wrong. Either they put on the show of a lifetime, or I had the wrong idea about what was going on. Do you guys want to order in tonight? She said yes, it's my fault. Tom said, Mom, I think we need to talk to you. Yes, is everything okay? She asked with worry on her face. Toombs answered, I'm not sure. Look around. I sat down on the couch next to Toby when we got inside, leaving Rachel to sit in her favorite, but ugly, chair. What's going on? She asked without showing any signs of worry. How was your day? I asked. She looked at me funny. She responded, just the same. Thank you to a pills rep, I ate lunch from the onion bin. It was as busy as ever. Why do you ask? I see, you spent the whole day at work, Toby asked. Yes, she said, why ask so many questions? What's going on? I asked, so you weren't with Jerry Garner here at the house this afternoon. Her face turned white, she said, no way. Oliver, do you blame me? I said, I saw you. What? She began to stutter, you didn't see anything. How do you see it? Toby, he's not telling the truth. I worked all day. Angel is the person to ask. Toby spoke up and said, No, I believe him, Mom. I believe you are not telling the truth. Angel, I'm not going to ask. She would take care of you. I'm going to call David Jones. You do have a boss, right? I hope he won't lie for you. What does his number look like? Rachel replied, He's gone for the day. He'll call you tomorrow, thanks. What's going on between you two? You want to trick me? Do you think you can mess me up here? What exactly do you think I did wrong? She thought that a strong attack was the best way to protect herself. I told her, I think you were caught lying. Rachel, you lied. We all three know it. Why did you do that? She looked like she was thinking a lot. She said, okay, I was here. That's why I didn't want to tell you. I knew you were going to question me and try to find fault with me. Toby made it clear that no one was putting anything on you. But I am now. You tried to convince me that my dad is not telling the truth. To hide your lie, you tried to make him look bad. Hide something, mom, are you seeing that other guy? Rachel said, you don't know him. Why do you call him a guy? Toby said, I've met him twice. I don't like how he looks at me. That's not the point, though. Are you seeing him other people? Rachel looked at us both and seemed stuck. She said, I didn't want it to go this way. I wasn't ready. What are you getting ready for? Toby put down. She told him, I've fallen in love with Jerry. She looked at me. Oliver, I am sorry. It happened right now. You know that we work together a lot? I don't know, he felt like my other half. I couldn't stop us from clicking. We love each other. I was going to let you know when we were ready. Once we're both no longer married, we'll get married. I'm really sorry. This is not how I wanted you to find out. Toby, everything will be fine. You can still see your dad whenever you want. He lives in a nice house by the lake. You should know that he has a daughter too. He likes you and is pleased with you. Are you crazy? Toby almost screamed. I'm not going to live with that jerk. He could come into my room at night. 
I'm moving in with my dad, so I can see him whenever I want. I'm not going to see you. How could you? She sped up to her room and locked the door. Rachel took a quick look at me. She said she would cool down. Oliver, Jerry is a good person. You'll see. I need to feel good. I'm happy because Jerry is in my life. I did nothing but look at her. What was she? She seemed like she had been swapped out. I wasn't going to fight with someone who was so weak. What the heck, Rachel, I said. When are you going to leave? Leaving? She asked. I'm not. I have nowhere to go. We need to tell Jerry's wife before we do anything else. We'll all have to get divorced and fix our differences first. I told them, no, you're leaving. You have three days. She opened her mouth wide. What do you want to say? I'm not leaving my own home. You should be the one to leave. I told them, I think you're forgetting something. This is my home. It was mine before we met. It was paid for and in my name before we got married. The house doesn't belong to everyone. It is only mine. The deed has my name on it, not yours. No, you're the one leaving my house. In what direction should I go? The woman asked, do you just want to kick me out? I said, I really don't care where. You might be able to get a room at a hotel. It could be one of those places you can rent by the hour and where liars hang out. She started to cry. She told him, that hurts a lot, Oliver. Don't call people names. My plan was not to fall in love with Jerry. It happened right now. We got along, and I had to be with him. I did not mean to hurt you. I replied, oh, so it was an accident. Like mom always told you not to trip and poke your eye out with a stick while you're running. I get it now. I guess everything is okay now that I know it was an accident. She replied, you don't have to be so sarcastic. Why can't you accept that Oliver and I love each other? As a joke, I told Rachel, gee, I don't know. Maybe because you told me you loved me this morning. So you say you love him now. I guess I'm just a little confused. She told him, I still love you. I love you always. I love Jerry so much now. I responded, that clears things up. Rachel, you've told me for 18 years that you love me. That's what I thought we got married for. We loved each other. I see now I was wrong. We were in love, not dating. I pulled away when she reached for my hand. Rachel, you have three days. I will have the sheriff kick you out and throw your stuff in the yard if you aren't gone by then. Oliver, please help her, she begged, now scared. Things don't need to be this way. We can still be friends. He also wants to be your friend. We need to think about Toby. I love you and don't want to lose our friendship. It's been too long to just throw it away. I did nothing but look at her. All the sadness and loss I felt started to go away, and I felt burning anger take its place. I told Rachel, you must be crazy. Friends? Together? That jerk? I don't believe that. Tell him that if he sees me, it should only be for a short time and then he should leave. You are now the enemy. I'm setting your house on fire. Three days. Then I don't want to see your cheating self ever again. I'll get in touch with a lawyer in the morning, and you'll get your divorce right away. I went to the bedroom and left her making noise there. For me, it was just background noise. She stuck with me and said we were friends while I moved her things into the extra bedroom. I made her carry the clothes because I had too many to carry myself. Then I took a handful to the extra room and hung them up in the closet. She followed me around. She stayed for a while, talking and looking at me. I sneaked out of the room and locked the door to the bedroom when she went to hang up the clothes. In the hall, I heard her trying the knob. After that, she left. Toby sent me a text message after a while. Are you okay, dad? Yes, cat, are you? I answered. She said, not yet, but I will be. Yes, I sent love to you. Please text me if you need anything. She asked, can you take me to school in the morning? I don't want to go on the ride with her. Yes, of course. I got into bed and thought about what to do for hours. Around three, I must have fallen asleep. My phone alarm woke me up. I got up, cleaned up, and called my boss. I told them I needed some time off because I was getting divorced. He understood, told me to take as much time as I needed, and showed concern. I made coffee, drank a few cups, and then made Toby and I breakfast. She got down on time, looked as beautiful as ever, and ate her food right away. Rachel finally came in and got a coffee. We didn't listen to her when she tried to talk to us. Rachel asked her if she was ready to take Toby to school. He looked at Rachel for a moment, then turned to me and asked, Are you ready, Dad? When I jingled the keys, she grabbed her bag. Rachel said, Of course you can act like toddlers if you want to. She yelled at us, grabbed her bag, gave us one last look, and then she left. When I took Toby to school, she kissed me goodbye and went inside. I was in the car and watched her go into the building. It made me think of my friend Dan, who had just gotten divorced. I chose to call him and find out about his lawyer. Dan told me not to use his own lawyer, 
but to use the lawyer his wife has instead. I found the number after being given the name. A woman answered the phone when I called and set up a time for that afternoon. To protect our money, I did things like lower the credit card limits to $1,500. It would also make things hard for me, but I wasn't going to pay for Rachel's affair. It wasn't a good start to my meeting with Elizabeth Baxter. She thought I was going to leave Rachel for someone else. She was wrong, and I told her so. She's been seeing a married co-worker and they want to get a divorce and marry each other next. She said, I'm sorry. I can't help someone who is in that kind of trouble. It goes against what I believe in. I answered, I get it. We have a girl. I want to keep her safe from what might happen. Is there a chance I could get her back? She agreed that it was possible. It's possible for either parent to get custody. In practice, though, dads almost never get custody of their kids, especially girls. Does she want to live with you? How old is she? I told her I agree because she is 15 years old and wants to be with me. She promised that would matter a lot in court. Kids over 14 can choose in our state, and the choices of younger kids also count. Since she wants to stay with you and is old, things should work out for you. Just do your best, I told her to end the discussion. I thought about what to do next as I drove home. I knew I had to follow the rules. I didn't want to risk losing control of Toby by getting into trouble. I had to carefully plan, thinking about all of my options and what might happen. Like me, I thought Jerry's wife didn't know. So, the first thing you should do is tell her. I chose to make a list that spelled out my plan. I was going to tell her family for sure. So I knew it was important to tell her parents first. They had always liked me and loved Toby. I didn't know how to go about it, though. It was also important that all of our friends knew, and I thought that social media would be a good way to get people's attention and change things. That was the first thing I needed to do. Rachel made a Facebook page for our family. I was used to it because I used Messenger a lot and knew how to get around. I did some research online and found that Jerry's wife also had a similar online profile. I copied some pictures and put on Rachel's page that we were breaking up and that she had found her true love in Jerry, along with a picture of him. After that, I changed my password and signed off. It made me happy. I was wondering how long it would be before her family and friends started calling her and posting a lot of things on Facebook. I hoped that Jerry's wife would get it. I didn't know her, and the trouble she would have to go through made me feel a little guilty, but I thought she'd rather know the truth than be kept in the dark. I spoke to mom. It was expected that the talk wouldn't go well, but she told me she'd tell her dad and that they would always be there for me. I told Rachel that she could tell her parents herself. We were close, and I didn't want to make things worse between my family. Also, I didn't know how to bring it up with them. It didn't seem like the right message when your daughter cheated on you. Instead of the message, they might blame him. Things got worse very quickly. Rachel's name showed up on my phone around 2 p.m. when I called her, she was very angry. You jerk. Something about her first words made me feel good. You couldn't just leave it alone, could you? I know that you stopped me from using Facebook. Take that stuff away. Jerry's wife has no idea. Friends call me all the time and ask what's going on. No one but my parents knows. Oliver, you need to take it down. I shot back, so you don't get to decide what to do. What, do you behave like a kid of five? Hey Oliver, put it down. I'm not kidding. Why should I? I pushed back. You should be very happy. This way, everyone can get used to you and your partner. Rachel, do you feel bad that people know you cheated? I'm not, she said, pausing when she heard how silly that sounded. Hey Oliver, could you please take it down? Things shouldn't be going this way. I told her that once you cheated, you could no longer change how things go. You lost the right to my respect and even the right to be polite. Rachel, I've made it clear that you are now my enemy. Take care of it. I hung up. Right away, my phone rang again, but I didn't pay attention to it. It was time to get Toby. I told Toby what I talked about with Elizabeth Baxter. She was glad that she would probably be with me, but she wasn't happy in general. Dad, what's wrong with her? She asked. She's always been a little off, but I care about her. She never behaved like an adult. Not at all like you. It's like I and she are your two children. Did you ever notice that? I said, not like that. I see what you mean. She has always been a bit rash, but that's just how she is. This is not what I thought she would do. She said, we'll just have to deal with it the best we can. Dad, I never want to be in that house by myself with that creep again without you. Make sure that doesn't happen at all costs, okay? I told her I would do everything I could. On the way home, we stopped for pizza. I was enjoying my second slice when my phone rang. Bob, Rachel's dad, called. I didn't want this to happen. When I told Toby who it was, she said to put it on speaker. Bob didn't wait around. Olivia, I don't know what's going on, but Rachel asked to stay with us last night whenever she came by. 
Would you mind explaining? Did you ask her? What was it? She said that you threw her out. Yes, I did. But did she tell me why? I replied. No, she said she would in a bit. He answered. Do you really want to hear her side? I asked. Please tell me. He pushed. Her boyfriend at work, Jerry Garner, has been seeing her. He wants to get a split from his wife. I told her that she was going to divorce me, but now they're together. What? That's not possible, Oliver. How do you know? The man asked. I told her I saw them together yesterday, and she agreed. Are you sure that doesn't get lost? He kept going. Then Toby spoke up. Hey, Grandpa. I have been hearing. Dad has you on speaker. No one is getting it wrong. I was there when she told him. I'm sorry, Grandpa. I love you. He heard her voice break. His voice was rough when he spoke again. Sweetheart, don't cry. Stay strong, please. Grandma and I love you very much. I'm going to try to reason with your mom. Hey Oliver, are you still there? I'm sorry, Bob. No need to worry about Toby. You will always be her grandparents. You'll do what you need to do because you care about Rachel. I admire you so much that I can't even put it into words. I hope that when this is over, you won't hold a grudge against me. He told me that wasn't going to happen. I'll find out what's going on. Please call me if you need anything. I didn't think it would go so well. Things go wrong in life, and you have to do your best to deal with them. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the breakup. The experience is well known to most people. It took a long time, hurt, and didn't get better. Rachel seemed to have too high of hopes for herself. She was sure she would get Toby back, but it didn't work out. It turned out that Miss Baxter was very smart. Toby's wish to live with me led to me getting full control. The judge said that Rachel could have visiting rights with Toby and Jerry Garner, but not time with them without being watched. But that quickly stopped being important. They didn't have as strong of a soulmate link as they thought, because his wife filed for divorce. He was seeing someone else two weeks after I found out they were having an affair. We lost track of all those big plans. It took seven months to go through with the divorce. Rachel changed her mind. I was shocked when she asked to see a counselor during our second court date. Neither Miss Baxter nor I could change her mind. The judge told her to do what she did. We were supposed to meet eight to ten times. We met this strange old hippie man in the end. We had to write down our goals in our first meeting. Rachel's was very long and caught up. She looked like she thought the world spun around her happiness and that she only wanted to be happy and not hurt anyone. It was a lot easier for me. What do you want to get out of these meetings, Mr. Berryman? He asked. I told them, I just want them to be over. Our guide made a face. Mr. Berryman, don't you want to talk about the things that caused your marriage to end? I'm sorry, Mr. Rodman, but those problems aren't mine, and I have no desire to deal with them. No matter what problems I have, I'm happy with who I am. Both Rachel and Mr. Guru looked shocked by my answer. Rachel jumped in with her mind set. Oliver, if you won't even talk about this, how can we move on? I made it clear that we were not going back. Just so you know, I don't want to fix anything or go back to how things were. I'm only here because the judge told me to be. That being said, we will then officially end our split. That's my plan. Are you aware that you could be held in contempt if I tell the judge you're not cooperating? Mr. Spirit Guide said be careful. I replied, I wasn't aware of that. Do you think you'll lie to the judge? These meetings are being recorded. My lawyer could demand the tapes and show that you are not telling the truth. I'm here to do what you want. I told you what my goals were when you asked. So I'm going along with it. It made him look bad. He said that the judge probably thought you would try to work out your problems. I made it clear that I'm not responsible for what the judge wants. I only have to answer for mine. He made things hard. As part of my tasks, I had to spend a lot of time with Rachel, who worked hard to wear me down. What do you need to do to stop the breakup and get along? She asked. I responded, an act of God. She was waiting for me to say more, but I didn't. What do you mean when you say, God did? She pushed. I told her that nothing would change unless she could go back in time and stop having an affair with Jerry. I've only heard of God having that power. Rachel, have you learned any secret skills? Also, the ability to use your charms to attract other guys. We put up with boring activities and pointless talks until they were finally over. When we went back to court, the judge asked if anything had changed. Elizabeth Baxter told the judge, Your Honor, my client has no plans to stay married to his wife. We ask that this divorce be completed as soon as possible. This process has been going on for too long for my client and his daughter. After 10 days, the divorce order showed up in the mail, so it looks like the judge agreed. Because Toby liked being with her grandparents, she spent a lot of time with her mother. Toby and Rachel sometimes made plans together, but their relationship wasn't the same. 
Toby spent most of her time with her friends, especially Sabrina, who lived with us for a while. I liked having Sabrina around because she was cute and nice. They started including me in the things they were doing. The thing they loved most to do was water ski. We often spent Saturdays at nearby lakes during the summer because we had a boat. They asked us on Monday if we could take our RV to the lake for the weekend. I thought it was a great idea since I didn't have many plans. The week before, Toby and Sabrina planned, and on Thursday, we packed everything they needed. We were home when a new red Jeep Cherokee pulled up on Friday afternoon. Sabrina got out of the car. Toby rushed to give the woman, who looked a lot like her, a hug when she got out of the driver's side door. Toby told me her name, Julie, and said, Dad. I know you haven't met Sabrina's mom yet. Julie put out her hand. Hello, Oliver. The girls have talked about you a lot. Thank you for letting me come this weekend. I have to say I've been a little jealous that they spend so much time with you instead of me. I knew right away why her daughter was so cute when she saw her naughty smile. Toby gave me a mean look when I looked at her. As my knees shook, I knew it was time to give up. When I looked at Sabs, the shaking got worse, and she raised an eyebrow. I told Julie that it would be fun to find my voice again. We have a great time every time. She quickly learned. She looked back at me after looking at the girls and then at me again. Oh my god, she yelled. You didn't know, did you? Girls. People hugged, kissed, and begged her before she could say anything else. Mom, please, do not worry. Sabrina told her, we'll have a great time. Julie, it's okay. Toby added, your dad will love you just as much as I do. He's great. Take a look at how he's handling it. She broke away from the girls and looked at them. Go sit on the porch, you too. She told me, I need to talk to Oliver. They were unsure, but she insisted. Right now, they did what they were told and ran off quickly. Hey Oliver, I'm really sorry. I had no idea, she said sorry, I'm going with Sabs, she can't do anything for a month, this is way too embarrassing, she looked shy and small, so I went up to her and gave her a hug. She tightened up at first, but then she calmed down, I agreed that it was embarrassing, they're bad, but not dangerous, please guess, she laughed and looked up at me, you're not married, she was so cute, man, I'm not, though, do you believe that's what this is about, I answered, I'm pretty sure, so here it is. Everything is fine. The weekend was over. Lake is going to be great. I'm not a bad person. After seeing Toby, you know what I mean. Let's do it. It's going to be great. Also, who knows? We could surprise them. What do you say? She took a step back, looked at the girls who were waiting eagerly, and said yes. Let's go ahead and do it. When I gave them a thumbs up, they jumped up and ran to join us. As she came out, I heard Toby's excited yeet. I stopped them and put one girl on each arm. I told them, ladies, that wasn't cool. Sabs laughed like she was Skeletor as she looked up at me. I'm not nice. Everyone laughed so hard, even I couldn't keep a straight face. They were too cute and innocent. I told her in a gentle way, you know what you're doing. Stop it right now, please. You have to stay out of other people's lives. Toby said, but I love Jules, and I wanted you to meet her. I thought, well, you could have just told me. It looked like she was pretty upset. Kitten, don't worry. For now, just don't do this again, I told her. Her face got brighter again. Sabs grabbed my arm. Let's go, I'm excited. Oliver, this is going to be great. Just wait, Julie said with a laugh. That sounds like it should mean, really cool, Oliver. She's right, though. We're not using the sunshine. We got into her jeep and took two bags with us. We hitched up the boat and took off, stopping only briefly to get gas. We got to the lake in about 30 minutes, with Julie sitting in front of me. We began to get to know each other while the girls played some bad music on their Bluetooth. Julie had her own insurance business and planned her own finances, it turned out. During our conversation, I looked at her briefly. She was really cute. I thought Sabs would look like her mom when she grew up. Julie was only three years younger than me, even though she looked a lot younger. She was about five feet tall and had light blonde hair that reached her lower back. She was also very tanned. She had a beautiful heart-shaped face with a widow's peak and a wide forehead. She had big brown eyes and high cheeks. She showed off her slim figure by wearing pants and a button-up shirt. When we got to the lake, I really looked at her, but I didn't want to ogle her before that. We found a place to park the RV and the boat. I had to hook up the water since they kicked me out while they change. When they were ready, I changed into a t-shirt and swim shorts inside. Then we were ready to go. We left with a cooler full of drinks. As soon as I left the no-wake zone, I sped up. After going a few miles down the lake, the girls were ready to ski. They took off their long t-shirts, showing off their cute awkwardness. 
Julie, on the other hand, was different. She wasn't weird in the least. She was really small, even though I said she was thin. She looked like a woman. I was stunned when she turned to look at the girls. Even though her bikini wasn't very trendy, it did a great job of hiding her behind. It was round, small, hard, and stood out like a shelf. I looked at her, and she just smiled and winked. Even though her breasts were small, they looked great on her. They didn't look small, they looked great. It seemed like everything about her was just right. Are you done? She asked, her smile making the moment more pleasant. Her teeth were also very good. I laughed, for now, Julie, you already know how you look. I'm a guy. She walked up to me and found a place to talk while keeping an eye on the girls. We water skied for three hours, and Julie was very good. When it was my turn, she drove the boat. She was also good at that. I wasn't as good as she or the girls. It turned out that science wasn't on my side. I did okay, though. When they got back to the site, they put on wraps. The girls wanted to cook outside, even though the RV had a stove that worked fine. After setting up the camp stove, I lit a fire in the grill there. They cut up and fried potatoes and onions and opened cans of pork and beans while I grilled sausages. We had cooked some meals at home, but this was our first night in camp, and food cooked in a tent always tastes great. The site gave us a picnic table, and it felt like we'd known each other for a long time. The girls started calling Julie, Jules, and Julie liked it. I was called Ollie by her. It kept coming up that Jules wasn't married, so I finally asked her why. You're pretty, funny, smart, and you run your own business. Why hasn't a guy blown you away yet? She took a moment to think. She finally said, well, Sabrina is the main reason. It was silly and young of me, Ollie. It was a week before I graduated from college that I found out I was pregnant. I thought I had found the love of my life at the time. We talked about getting married right after college. As you talk about it in the past tense, I thought, I guess that plan didn't work out. It didn't, though. I found out that Brad had been cheating on me for a month three days after I told him. I broke up with him and haven't looked back since. As soon as Sabs was born, I was busy with being a mom. After that, I worked hard to grow my business. I realized I had this amazing gift from God in my life before I could even think about dating again. I couldn't make any choices without thinking about her. I said, I get it. I agree with you about Toby. She comes first as long as I have her. I love her so much and can't say it enough. In the past 18 months, she's been the one who kept me sane. Julie put her little hand on my arm. Yes, she said in a soft voice. She tells Sabs and me everything. Ollie, I'm really sorry. We both let out a sigh of relief. Life can be hard sometimes. When we looked up, we saw that two sets of loving eyes were on us. They were having a quiet chat while sitting in their camp chairs under the awning. I told you, I love your daughter. Because she spends so much time with us, I feel like she's almost a part of me. She also loves you, Julie answered. She told me the other day that you're like the dad she never had. A tear ran down her face as her eyes filled with tears. It was easy for me to wipe the cry away with my finger. I said, she's a great girl. She must be a great mom because she raised her. It takes a lot of guts for her to do it all by herself. Julie stood up, kissed my face, and smiled through her tears. She then went to join the other girls. We had a wonderful weekend. I walked up to Julie's car and tapped on the window as she was leaving. Jules, would you be interested in going out with me next Friday? I asked. Julie smiled, and Sabrina squealed with joy. When is it? How about six? I told you, we're going to get dinner and then do something. Does that sound good? Also, could Toby hang out with Sabs while we're away? That sounds great, and she agreed right away, kissing my face before driving off. When I got there, Toby was already there. Well, she asked with interest. Did you ask her to go on a date? Did you kiss her? I gave her a hug and hit her behind for fun. No, you shouldn't ask about that. I already know that I did. She was so happy that she squealed, matching Sabrina's excitement. There it was, Dad. She's just right for you. Sabs is like a sister to me, and I love her very much. I gave a shrug. Toby, no matter what happens, it happens. You can't make it happen. Don't try to set people up. She put her nose to my chest. Dad, I know, but you probably wouldn't have done anything if I hadn't pushed you. It's not that I don't like being the only woman in your life. I laughed. I'll always love you more than anyone else, so please know that. I will always love you as my baby. After purring happily for a moment, she went off to do her own thing. Our first date went well. We played tennis together. Even though she had never played before, she quickly learned how to use the same motions. She was great once she learned the rules and how to bounce the ball off the walls. She had a clear advantage because she was naturally agile. 
Because she was so small, she was very fast and could easily change directions. We cooled off at a table outside the courts, drinking drinks and taking a break after our game. She took out her phone. She told me to take a picture of the kids. She took a picture of us with our rackets and helmets. They answered right away, and we made a great memory. After that, we both took a shower, and I took her to dinner. We ate some tasty Italian food, which fully satisfied our hunger. When we were done with our wine, Jules sat down next to me in the booth, and we relaxed and talked quietly. Putting my arm around her seemed right, so I did it. She pushed herself closer to me and smiled warmly. I couldn't stop thinking about how cute she was, and I knew she would stay cute even as she got bigger. She would remember it. As soon as we got to her house, she leaned in close to me and looked excited. She seemed to want me to kiss her, so I leaned in and did it. I really wanted to kiss her more than she did. It was a sweet kiss that lasted a long time. It was nice to kiss her, and she smelled like a mix of wine and cherry chapstick. As we backed up, I saw something move behind the blinds. I said, it looks like we have an audience. She laughed and sounded a lot like her daughter. It doesn't surprise me, you understand that they want to trap us, right? I asked, does that bother you? She turned red, not at all, Ollie. I like everything I know about you. I answered, same here. We should go inside before they see us when they open the curtains. Each time we went out, we became closer. We did this for four months in a row. I wanted to move things along with her slowly because I didn't want to rush things. Near the end, our talks were getting more heated, which made me think of something more than just friendship. I learned that I liked having her as a close friend as well as a lover. Our conversations were always going on, we texted, snapped, and called each other all day. Every time I found something funny or interesting, I thought of Jules right away and had to tell her about it. Our friendship grew stronger, and we learned more about each other's lives. We started eating dinner together every Tuesday, and it turned into a deeply loved ritual. We played games together and became friends. I liked Sabs almost as much as I liked her mother. For those who knew the other, it was easy to tell who the other was. There were some things that made them different, but they were both very charming, and those differences only brought out the things that they had in common. Even though things were going well in general, Rachel's constant presence was still a bother. For as long as she was still in Toby's life, she had to be in mine too. I didn't want anything to do with her, and being around her always made me mad. She tried to start a chat every time she came to pick up Toby or when I dropped her off at her grandparents. Even though she and Jerry had both lost their jobs at the clinic, she was still living with them. She was now working at a different clinic across town. If Rachel was bothering me too much, I would bring up Jerry out of the blue to shut her up. How long will it be before you forgive me? In one of those times, she once asked. Please forgive me? Why? I replied. You don't even think you did anything wrong, I saw last time. I've never heard Oliver say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I'm sorry I tried to trick Toby into thinking you were lying. I'm sorry I tried to cheat on you in the breakup and take her away from you. Worst of all, I've never heard anyone say, I'm sorry I cheated on you and slept with that jerk behind your back. That time, I still didn't hear it. She wouldn't take blame for what she did. I didn't know what it would mean to forgive her. Things were okay with me after that, so I moved on. Even though I remembered, I wasn't going to be angry about it. Bad things are done by people. They can break up with you, leave you, or stop being friends, and you have to accept that and move on. Every day, bad things happen. I wanted to punish both cheaters at the time, but I quickly understood that the best punishment for them was to be honest with each other. They had to deal with what they did. Getting rid of the lies and betrayals was part of my plan to live with myself. I would focus on living my best life. Rachel looked like she was upset, and while I didn't dislike Jerry, I wasn't going to be the one to get back at him. Ask God or the world to take care of it. That game was over for me. When she found out I was dating Jules, she was even worse off. Rachel came up to me one night after I dropped Toby off at her grandparents' house. She told me you're seeing the mother of one of Toby's friends. I did nothing but stare at her. Is it real? She pushed. That's what I meant, I said. What the hell is that? She snapped back. I'm married to you. I have the right to be told. I replied, you have nothing. You are no longer my spouse. Remember that you found your true love and it wasn't me? After that, we split up. Your problems are no longer my problems, and mine are no longer yours. Rachel, stop it. Do not bother me. As I left, I was very angry. She just couldn't let it go, man. It was bad, and I told Toby about it. She was mad at the same things I was. After that, I stopped taking Toby to her grandparents' house or having Rachel pick her up from our house. Bob or Cindy, her grandparents, came to our house to pick her up instead. I felt a lot less stressed after that. Seven months after our trip to the lake, 
I took Jules for a walk. We ate at a nice place and then went to a club. Jules didn't drink much, sometimes he had a beer or a cocktail. But she had two that night. When she asked for the second, I raised an eyebrow. She laughed. Yes, I'm really crazy and wacky tonight, huh? Just like always, you're beautiful, I told her. Claire, do you really believe that? She often did this thing where she tilted her head to the side. Because I agree with you that you're great. Why haven't you asked me to stay over if I'm so great? She laughed, so I must have looked shocked. Have you thought about it? I got myself together again. Okay, Jules, since the first day on the boat when I saw you in that bikini, I haven't thought of much else. I knew you were unique and special when we started dating, and I didn't want to put any pressure on you or scare you away. She told him, you won't scare me away. The girls were told not to wait. Really? Why are we still here? What was it? Jules, please let's leave this place. Would you like to stay the night with me? Right now, more than anything else in the world. She leaned her head on my shoulder and grabbed my arm the whole way home, making me feel like she was melting into me. As soon as we pulled into the garage, I led her to the bedroom. She stayed close to me and turned around at the foot of the bed. I kissed her, it felt like it went on forever, and it was one of the best kisses I'd ever had. We stopped to catch our breath, and she looked up at me. The warm dark depths of her eyes drew me in. She put her arms around my neck and looked at me. She said in a whisper, make love to me, Oliver. I'm a little scared, I told her, don't be. Julie Barnes, I love you. Do you know that? She said, I thought so. But I had to hear it. My dear Oliver, I love you too. I sat on top of her, being careful not to put too much weight on her. How many times have you done this? I told her in a whisper. She said, three, but never like this. We fell asleep with our arms around each other and made love twice more during the night. Once when I started it and once when she did. The next morning, I woke up on my back with her half on top of me. Her hair was all over us, and her cheek was laying on my shoulder. I played with her hair while she slept and didn't pay attention until she woke up. She pulled closer and let out a sigh. Ollie, I feel like I belong here. I told them, I know. Would you like to wake up here every day? She looked at me when she opened her eyes. Do you mean live together? No, honey. Yes, but I mean, Julie Barnes, will you marry me? She put her little left hand up to her face and moved her fingers around. She said, oh, there is a lack of something. I told myself, hold that thought, as I got out of bed. She said, I'll hold the thought. I can't hold anything else, though. I really need to go to the bathroom. I laughed and swatted her behind for fun, which made her squeal. Go, and then come back here and meet me. Her little naked fairy ran off, and I made a pit stop on my way down to my office. I went to my safe to get what I needed, and when I came back, she was curled up under the covers. I got on and took her left hand again, looking into her loving eyes. Julie, would you marry me? The ring was put on her finger by me. It was too big, so we'll have to change it, but for now it'll do. She looked at it very carefully. She said, it's beautiful. It looks very old. Where did you get it? When did you get it? Do you remember when I said I was going to an auction? It was around a month ago. I do remember. Wasn't it a sale for an estate? Yes, I didn't tell you that I saw this ring in a catalogue and planned to buy it and ask you to marry me when I got home. For the Duchess of Avon, it was made in England around 1810. It has a long past. Do you like it? She said, I love it. I've never seen such a beautiful ring before. Are you going to answer my question? I asked. What? Yes, Oliver, I will marry you. Oh my god, yes. I laughed and gave my fiancé a tight hug. She said, we need to take pictures of the girls. Oh my god, 